The PCB I'm using in today's project was provided and sponsored by PCBWay.com. They have great product, wide range of services. Uh, myself, I've been using them for probably about two, two and a half years. Um, it all started initially. They have, you know, five dollar free prototype order for the first order. That kind of sucks you in. At that point, you realize how cheap and the necessity in some cases uh, that it is for some of your projects. Uh, went down that road, I haven't turned back yet. Um, they also do offer a wide range of services, uh, 3D printing, uh, CNC, injection molding, um, sheet metal fabrication. Um, some of these services I haven't used myself, uh, but I've, I've seen plenty of videos. Uh, they put out great product. Uh, reasonable priced as well. Um, I do have some upcoming projects. I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of the 3D printing. All right, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Alexa, Alexa, close the office door. All right, now that is a much, that's version one, but that's a much slower one. Uh, this one also has the capability to open, which is not something I'll ever put out there. Um, quite a bit more involved for that. Alexa, open the office door. So the new one, though, however, much quicker. It has a 433-meter receiver, um, so you can open it with a wireless remote. It's built onto a P PCB, so it is much, much more robust and functional uh, and safer as well. Fairly simple design. Wemos D1 Mini, 433 megahertz receiver, couple capacitors, motor driver, 12 volt uh, input DC jack. It also has a buck converter on it as well. That takes the 12 volts down uh, to 5 volts. Oh. I think it's on a PCB and it holds up to that. I'm going to go through a couple videos uh, showing one the how I assemble the PCB, the overall function, and the web interface. If you like this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Um, if you have some good opinions or anything to add to it, something you'd like to see different, go ahead and comment as well. I do appreciate you watching. All right, so here's the unit. This is, um, in fact, it'll work with either either one of these remotes. They're both 433 megahertz receiver. Um, so this is 12 volts. I currently have an ethernet cable running behind the trim. Coming up, there's a PoE injector behind the trim, providing the 12 volts. Um, so if you have a PoE switch, uh, it's even better. If not, you can purchase um, you know, a small injector fairly, fairly cheap. Um, but it makes it very easy to provide power for this up to 300 feet away. Um, 3D printed enclosure. Uh, do have a middle ring here where it connects to the motor. Uh, we can remove this with an Allen key. Um, I will have different, a couple different uh, units that are provided along with this, different depths depending on the situation you you, uh, you happen to come across. There is a, uh, a 10 second cooldown period between each close, so you can't sit there and hit it multiple times. If you happen to hit it while it's closing, it stops immediately and opens back up. So now I'll have to wait 10 seconds prior to closing the door again. Uh, maybe we're past that. We'll see. Nope. There we go. On the top of it, there is a restart switch and a uh, screw terminal that is for um, external switch. I'll show that in a moment. So real quick, hit the. All right, wait ten seconds. So while it's in that process, it can, you know, if a cat or a dog's walking through the door and it just touches them, it won't hurt nothing. 
Um, it'll continue to close, wait the 10 seconds. Um, once it gets past a certain point, about here, uh, it attempts to, well, the base of the time frame is shortened a little bit, so it's not gonna sit there, continue putting pressure on child's fingers that might be stuck. Now, bear with me, the house is still in the process of being remodeled. Here's another door with an external switch. Now this door frame, I don't have trim on here. This door frame is much closer yet. So this one is much smaller. So I will provide several different um, size plates to accommodate your situation. So I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, you know, please continue watching. Opportunity. Long story short, I decided I was going to change the motor in this guy because the uh, motor got damaged. Um, I was going to change it out from, from a 5 re revolutions per minute to a 10 revolution per minute. So basically doubling the speed, which is uh, what I've been trying to get to on a few of the other doors. It's just overall quicker. Um, on top of this, this only had one Hall Effect sensor. New one has two. Um, the coating has been updated. There is a RF receiver inside of this. Um, and the way it functions is a little different. So I went to basically put a different motor in here. And it wouldn't work. So there's a few things. Um, and... Retrospect, if I put this up with a new motor and it doesn't work, then this is all, well, you, you'll never see this. Um, <laughs> but I believe I contribute to a few things. One is the motor driver board in here um, takes 12 volt input, which is what I had on this wire. Um, puts 12 volts to the motor. It also has a uh, five volt output, which goes to the Wemos D1 Mini. So now this was one of the first doors I ever did. So I want you guys to take, I want to take this opportunity to show you how some of these projects turn out. So I have my Hall Effect sensor in there. I had one in there, but it didn't quite turn out too well. That one got butchered. So this is how these projects look. Now I want to be honest, for this controlling a motor in a 12 volt project, I understand it's not 120 volts, but 12 volts, on a two amp power supply. Still puts out some voltage. Uh, I'm sorry, put, still puts out some amperage. Can still get hot, can still cause some damage. And to be honest, having anything like this in a package like this is honestly kind of ridiculous. I'm not proud of this. It worked, it served, served its purpose. And to think that I was just gonna swap this out. Um, I am a little disappointed myself. Now, with this guy, meat. The updated version with a PCB board that's that was custom, I custom built. Um, PCB way was generous enough to send this to me. Um, they do absolutely great work. Um, on top of that, I made a couple stupid mistakes on this one, uh, which their engineer team actually caught it prior to uh, sending it out to me. So, save me a hassle. I greatly appreciate it. So, two things is with this updated. With this updated unit, it functions a little different. So first off, I do uh, I end up putting a buck converter on this, um, which brings in the 12 volts and drops it down to the 5 volts for my Wemos D1 Mini. So instead of the motor driver itself doing it, which means when there's a draw on here, it actually drops the voltage to the Wemos resetting, which is I believe why it wasn't currently why it, it couldn't handle the other motor. So in this case. Um, I'll end up having a buck converter on here um, that's going to handle that, that 12 volt separate. So 12 volts will come in, pass through to the motor driver and to the actual motor, and then to the buck converter as well. Um, so it's 12 volts coming into that buck converter. Um, even if the mo voltage dips a little bit, I'll still have the 5 volt output for the Wemos D Wind Mini. Um, it should hopefully resolve all my issues. So um, on top of that, you don't end up with crap like this. So this was meant to be a temporary solution, but the truth of the matter is without 
built without in situations like this building designing your own pcbs then this is pretty much your only option could have done been done a little bit cleaner yes but there's nothing that compares to making a pcb for it once again um, i personally use pcb way so great company great work so all right now i'll throw this somewhere in the mix of other videos that you get to see all right well i'm gonna go through the process of assembling one of these i know i've already said this quite a few times but i feel like uh project isn't complete until you have a pcb to do it with so and honestly this is probably one of my favorite parts of a project is getting to the point where i feel like i can finally start assembling a pcb so, figured uh, let's bring you guys with on my journey. This button and it will learn uh, code. Um, it can also learn, pick it up to like 15 remotes. Um, all right, so let's see on the hinge side, you have a uh, selector here to select whether you have a hinge on the left or hinge on the right of the unit. Um, in most cases, it's going to be a 10 uh, RPM motor, but um, certain cases where slower speed is acceptable and you need more torque, um, you can drop this down to a 5 revolution per moment motor. Um, yep, yep, all right. So basically the way, the way this is set up is you go from operating mo mode into calibration. You'd come up here and hit park arm. At that point, it's going to move the arm um, to the perspective location based on where your hinge is at. So there's two built-in hollow effect sensors. Um, so what it's going to do is it's literally going to it's going to park it, um, you know, line it up with that hollow effect sensor. Um, now there are a few things: is uh, the unit uh, you can calibrate it and whatnot, but the unit itself um, will not work on its own um, after it's lost power. Um, just a two minute cooldown period. So two minutes after it's booted up, it's good to go at that point. Um, when you close it, there's a 10 second cooldown period between each closing. So what we can do at this point is we have closing time all the way at zero. Go ahead and close, close the door. And cert, most certainly that is not going to close the door all the way. So you can go through and you can move this up in increments, kind of play with it. I think we got a, yeah, sometimes you got to refresh in order for that number to, yeah. Now I will say on a, on a computer, you can use your mouse or your arrow keys and fine tune that. So I know that this current door needs to be at 0.95. Um, so you're just going to go through and you're going to slowly bring it up until the door all you know closes all the way and it latches. You want to make do it four or five times, to make sure it consistently closes. At the same time, it's not overly doing it. Um, you want it right at that threshold. Um, and at that point, you should be good. You do have an option to to add a delay to the external triggers. Um, so whether that's a switch or the remote, you can go all the way, all the way up to a 120-second delay. Um, you do have the option up here if you put it into calibration. This you can adjust uh, the time duration that it actually moves. Um, you're going to want to honestly keep it, you know, a default uh, where it sits. Um, and then you can hit these buttons. 
to move it forward and back. So right now, if you notice, the arm is parked on the left-hand side because it's a left-hand hinge. So I can move it forward. Now it's no longer no longer there. Hit park, and it's going to come back to its resting place. If I happen to put hinge on the right, and I hit park, it's going to move it all the way and park on the right-hand side. Go back to the left-hand side here. Park it. And that is it. At that point, um, you can use any of the triggers to do that. You can um, hit this button and it'll close. Uh, or if you use Home Assistant, you can integrate with Home Assistant. And at that point, use any of your um, voice assistants you'd like to use. So, thank you for watching.